Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. You're on assignment from Jehovah. And God is going to get this gospel preached in these last days. A lot of you don't know it, but it's been Satan holding up your money. It's been spiritual forces causing that deal not to come. And so forth and so on. Stop trying to do things in the natural. You can't whip him down. Get up in the spirit and get the power of God down on him. And the thing will happen in one day. Hello, Bill Winston here. And welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, in John chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. You know, when Jesus was ministering here on earth, he did works. He did miracles. He did feeding of the poor and changing water to wine and, and just a number of things. But he said, the things that we're going to do is going to be greater than what he did. Now, this is this is almost mind-boggling. It's, wow, how can that be so? Well, I know one of the greater works is that Jesus never built an orphanage. He never built a, a synagogue. He never, none of these things he did. But you're going to be building churches, and you're going to be taking care of the poor. You're going to be building orphanages. You're going to be going to the prisons and, and, and putting schools in prison, so forth. Oh, we're going to be doing greater works. Let's go into it. It's called The Greater Works, Volume 2. So let's go back real quick to Isaiah chapter 61 and look at verse 2. Now this is, this is Jesus now giving you the limit of his ministry and then talking about where you're going to pick up. It's called the latter rain. All right, look what it says here. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. How many of you remember him saying that? That scripture saying that. Watch this. And this part wasn't Jesus' part. And the days of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, then the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall what? Build what? The old waste places. You're going to build neighborhoods. Now understand, God is going to transfer you sufficient abilities and resources to make that happen. And the first thing he's going to give you is an empowerment. Now let's go to Jesus. Turn to John chapter 7, please. Look what he said in verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never, what? Learned. Let's look at another translation of that particular verse. And the people were surprised when they heard him. How does this man know so much when he, has, he hasn't been, what? Trained, they asked. Let's try the NIV translation, please. He said, and the Jews, they were amazed and asked, how does this man get such learning 
without having what? Been taught. And I'm saying what we studied so far is that you're going to learn things you weren't taught. But how are you going to know them? 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20, please. He said, but you have an unction from the Holy One. Come on. And you know all things. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm saying there's going to be something inside of you that's going to be teaching you. Are you with me? There's a lady, I read the letter last Sunday, and she said she spoke in tongues for 10 minutes before taking her exam. She was undergraduate, uh, uh, she was in undergraduate school and she was majoring in engineering. And so she, those exams, she said were hard, but she spoke in tongue. And when she spoke in tongue 10 minutes and took the exam, she always made the highest grade in the class. She was sending me some of the grades. The grades, maybe it was 97 was the highest. The lowest was 32. Consistently, every exam, she was the highest. Watch this. She said she would know answers that she did not know. She said just as plain as day, something would speak to her and said it's answer number B. It, 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 it. Now, I'm not saying you don't study. But look at Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. Now, I'm, I'm just giving you, I'm loading you up now. I'm letting you know what you got to work with. As for these four children, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God gave them what? Knowledge and what else? Skill in all what? Learning. So they did go to learn, but he gave them knowledge in excess of their learning. Why? Why does he do that? Because you don't want to compete with the devil's crowd. You want to dominate them. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and look at verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world. Princes mean rulers of this world or demons that come to naught. Watch this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. He's going to use it to lift you up. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have what? Crucified Jesus. See, they crucified him. They, they hung him on a cross and crucified him because they thought they were getting rid of it. But they were planting him. He was using wisdom to suck them in to fulfilling the plan of God and he used the high priest to do it. As much scripture as the high priest knew, they were still being uh, worked by, by God. God was still using them to carry out his plan, and they thought they were stopping Jesus. They didn't stop him. They multiplied him because he's in you, he's in me, he's in you, he's in, come on. Here's the end game or the end of this thing. Let's go to Hebrews and chapter um, 1, please, and verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until may I make who? Thy enemies, thy what? Thy footstool. God is saying to his son, sit down here on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now, wait, 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 wait now. Where are the feet? In the head? Because Jesus is the head of the body. Or are the feet in the body? The feet are in the body. So you sit here and I'm going to have your body to put their feet on Satan's neck. Can't you see it? So the church is going to end up in rulership. We're going to end up reversing bad laws. Bad tax laws. Watch this. Bad education laws. Bad social laws. We're going to end up
stop turning those around. Some people have not been able to prosper in their businesses because Satan has been using spiritual power to win. I've got a book called, called Business Unlimited. So he says he was making these pots and all this, and he sold them to big department stores. And so he's making all this big warehouse, and he had huge customers. But all of a sudden, he said, everything stopped. None of them ordered. And what did he do? He said he was thinking now about laying off people because the, orders, the, the, the inventory just piling up. And so what he did is he said, now these are things people needed and people wanted. So don't think it's the quality of your product that's, that's you know, in, in this particular case. So what happened? This person saw him and said, why don't you go to Bible study with us tonight? They went to Bible study with them. They read across the scripture, scripture over there in Leviticus, and it talks about one can put a thousand fight, two can put ten thousand. But they prayed an intercessory prayer for him. And then he said that by Monday, whatever's been holding my businesses up is going to be broken. He's going to have a breakthrough. Monday morning, orders start flooding in. And what he said is the warehouse and all the inventory that's been stacked up will be sold. And it got all sold except some number 14 pots or whatever that was. And all that, and they were still there. And he called his office manager in. He said, listen, come in here. He said, we got to agree on something. Because I agreed, I prayed that all the inventory should be sold. And we still got some number 14 pots. I'm just saying number 14 because it was something like that. And so they prayed and agreed within one half hour, he got a phone call from one of the big customers and said, we need some number 14 pots. And he said, it wiped his inventory out. Listen, the man wasn't in sin. The man didn't do anything. I'm just saying Satan doesn't need a reason. He'll try to come in and make you feel that it just happened that way. Now, I want you to hear this because Satan is using spiritual forces to win. So you need spiritual forces to win. Now, let me show you how much powerful your force is than Satan's force. Look at Exodus chapter 9. And the Lord said unto Moses and to Aaron, take you a handful of ashes of thy furnace, out of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. Watch this. And it shall become small dust in all of the land of Egypt and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains. Now, blains are um, inflammations upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it upon the, and toward the heavens, and it became a boil breaking forth with blame upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils was upon the magicians and upon the Egyptians. So God says, I'm going to curse those that curse you. Now, I'm going to bless those that bless you. Now, understand what had to happen. These were judgments that came upon Egypt because they wouldn't let Israel go. Why? Because it was a prophetic agenda. And in a prophetic agenda, it cannot be stopped. That whoever's in the way of one who is on assignment from God with a prophetic agenda will either be tormented or terminated. Now, look at Ezekiel chapter 33. He said, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, 
I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his way, come on, and live. You got what I'm saying? God is not in the business of killing folk. But, but, if you happen to get or someone happens to get, get an assignment from God and somebody's standing in your way in the latter days of what we're in right now, you're going to, they're going to experience the vengeance of the Lord. Now, let's define vengeance because some people think that means revenge has nothing to do with revenge. When I say vengeance, vengeance has nothing to do with hate or emotional resentment or some kind of emotional retaliation. But it's a necessary, it's necessary for the punishment of offenders that, and this judgment is proceeding from a heart of love and of justice. So it's not God trying to kill folk. It's God's way of getting his in time gospel and transformation done to make Satan and his bunch Jesus' footstool. Now look at Numbers chapter 23. When I get done with you, you're going to be convinced that you can't even get sick. When, when I get done with you, listen, listen, folks. He said, my people are destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge, and that is it. Verse 19 of Numbers chapter 23. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received com commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Now, how did you get blessed? From Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. God said, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will what? Bless thee. And make your name what? Great. And you shall be a what? Blessing. Next verse. And I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. And in thee shall all families come on of the earth be blessed. Why? Because in these last days, I got to get the gospel of the kingdom to people who have never even heard the gospel. But those that are standing between me and trying to get that gospel out, they're going to have to pay a price. Now, notice what happened with Moses' case. Here's Pharaoh. Let my people go. Pharaoh, at one time, he said, okay, let's do it. But then he changed his mind. Then lights came, and then darkness came, and then all of this. But here's the final thing. Finally, he let him go. But he made one mistake. What did he do? He went after him. Don't go after God's people. I said, you, you watch. What, what would I bring? With? That d God had to deal with him. He had to terminate him. He had already tormented him, but he wouldn't listen. And when they won't listen, God's got to do something with them because you're on assignment from Jehovah. And God is going to get this gospel preached in these last days. A lot of you don't know it, but it's been Satan holding up your money. It's been spiritual forces causing that deal not to come. And so forth and so on. Stop trying to do things in the natural. You can't whip him now. Get up in the spirit and get the power of God down on him. And the thing will happen in one day. Look what it says in Numbers. Chapter 23 again, if you will. 
And come on down to verse 23. Surely there shall no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. What I'm telling you is no witchcraft is going to work against you. No sorcery, come on, from this day forward. Whatever sorcery has tried to work against you is going to be returned. This is going to be your finest hour. And the power of God's going to be on you that you're going to demonstrate that Jesus is Lord. So Moses needed vengeance because without vengeance, Moses could not take his place. God had to execute vengeance. But also Jesus needed vengeance when he was a baby and born in the earth. Look what it says here in Matthew's gospel and chapter two, please. Now what happened was wise men came into this part of Bethlehem and uh, they came into Judea and Herod, the king, was king at that time. And they came in and he saw these wise men and all these donkeys carrying all this gold. And so he stopped them and they said, we came to worship a king. Well, now Herod said, whoa, 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 what's going on here? This is my jurisdiction. No, it isn't. That every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon is your jurisdiction. See, the people, Psalm 82 says, they are living in darkness. They don't know what they're doing. They have no defense against the devil. I'm finishing that book now called The Spirit of Leadership. I got to tell people, they're going to either be led by God or be led by some other spirit. You, it's impossible to live in this earth without that because you're not made to be your overlord. You're made for an overlord. You got to have one. God made you to have him as your overlord. But when Adam sinned, now the devil became the overlord. So the devil is influencing, influencing, influencing is the best way of leading somebody because they don't know they're being led. All right, look what it says in Matthew and chapter two. So they came to Jesus, they gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And look what it says here. Now God spoke to Joseph and told Joseph, verse 13, that he arise and take the child and now go down to, to Egypt. And he said, until I bring you word. Going down here to verse 16. And Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children, terrible thing, that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now, that's interesting here. He's trying to stop Jesus. Jesus now, the Bible calls him a child. How do I know that? Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. Say young child. So Jesus was two years old or under. He was called a young child. He had the wise men going back some other way and infuriated Herod. And Herod said, okay, tell you what, I'm going to kill all the kids in here. I'm going to make sure I get him. I'm going to kill. Now, he didn't know that, that the angel told him, uh, the, the, uh, you know, Joseph to book, I mean, to go on down to, uh, to Egypt. And, and, so, and so now here we got a situation where he's killing all these kids, but Jesus is not among them. Now, watch what happened. Verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared into the, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise now and take who? <laughs> Folks, we are not talking about 60 years that Herod died. We are talking about a matter of months, maybe two years at the most. But not only did Herod die, look what it says here over here in verse 20, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which seek the young child's life. For they, for they, for every one of them, everything, everyone, everything 
that was with Herod, everything that was on his side, everything that sought, everything that committed this atrocity, everyone that was involved in it is dead. Now, God don't play. And I'm telling you right now, you need to take time and read this because I'm about to show you where witchcraft won't work on you. Watch this. And God is getting to the place where he doesn't even allow anybody to speak rough to you. It's in the book. The challenges of life can often leave you feeling trapped, frustrated, and unfulfilled. And even those who have found success in their life sometimes feel they've hit a roadblock, keeping them from their ultimate dreams and goals. Well, the time has come to break through these roadblocks and remove the limits the enemy has placed on your life. God's Holy Spirit is ready and waiting to deliver Jesus' promise of greater works in your life right now. Your time for transformation has arrived. Call us now at 800-711-9327 or go online to billwinston.org in the U.S. Or in Canada, call us at 844-298-2900 or go online to billwinston.ca to order the message, The Greater Works, Volume 2. In this life-changing teaching, Dr. Bill Winston explains how to expand your thinking and stop your fears from blocking your destiny. You'll learn how to look beyond your physical senses and tap into the spiritual greatness God has in store for you. Accomplish greater goals. Achieve greater purpose. Take your understanding to a whole new level of prosperity, not only for yourself, but for the lives of those you encounter daily. Let the Holy Spirit open doors to possibilities you've only imagined and prepare yourself for the anointing of wisdom, opportunity, and protection in your work, home, and relationships. Don't settle for unanswered prayers one moment longer. Activate your anointing today. Call now to choose this teaching in either DVD, MP4, CD, or MP3 formats and begin to drive fear out and allow the power of God to flow into your life in every way imaginable. Total fulfillment is yours to claim. So don't accept anything less. Know that you are anointed. You are built to conquer fear and you are guaranteed to triumph over any challenge set in your path. God has called you to a new level of greatness. Now, answer that call today. Operators are standing by. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you.